What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. I've already made a couple videos uh, with what you should do the first time you take the Galaxy S23 Ultra out of the box. I also made a video about some essential apps. Today I'm going to show you guys how to put your Galaxy S23 Ultra into beast mode. And when I say beast mode, I really mean getting the maximum power, performance, but also maintaining great battery life with your Galaxy S23 Ultra. I have several tips that will show you guys how to do that. If you haven't purchased an S23 Ultra yet, be sure to check out the links in the description to do that. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is how to reduce animations on your S23 Ultra. There's a couple of ways you can do this. And uh, the first one is to go into the settings menu, scroll down to the very bottom. Well, not the very bottom, but pretty close to where it says accessibility. And when you scroll down in accessibility, you'll see something called visibility enhancements. Under visibility enhancements, you'll be able to scroll down and turn on remove animations. What this does is it basically makes it faster as you navigate around the UI. This is also mainly for people who have, you know, some issues medically to having those animations, you know, going so quickly. Um, this will basically remove any an animations for transitions between the apps. So you see here when I open Twitter, it's basically instant. Uh, I'll show you guys the difference. If I go back into the settings menu and uh, we toggle this so that we turn remove animations off. Now when I go into Twitter, you see how it smoothly goes into and out of the app. So if you're someone who wants to get from point A to point B at the end of the day in the fastest possible way, this is probably something that you would really enjoy turning on and having on all the time. It is a personal choice, but it's something that I enjoy to use, especially when I'm at work. Sometimes when I'm at home, I like to relax and enjoy the animations a little bit, but it's up to you if you decide you want to turn that on or not. Uh, you can also, if you want to turn the animations down, instead of turning them off completely, you can go down to the About Phone portion and then turn on Developer Options. The way you do that is you tap on the build number in About Phone multiple times, five times actually, and then you'll get this Developer Options menu at the bottom. Once you get that, you can scroll down in here and you'll also find options to remove animations or turn them down. The nice thing about this is it's right here, transition animation scale, animator animation scale, and window animation scale. Instead of turning them off entirely, you can actually set them to 0.5. This is something I usually like to do instead of turning them off entirely. It speeds up the process, but you still get to see the animation so it's not quite as jarring. It's really a personal decision, but if you leave it at 1x, it'll be the stock animations that you get out of the box. And this is something that can speed up your use of the phone. The next thing is, enable swipe down for notifications. This is a really simple one. You just long press on the home screen, go into the settings menu at the bottom, and there will be an option here where it says swipe down for notification panel. What this lets you do is it basically lets you swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get into the notification panel instead of having to reach all the way to the top. This is a very tall phone and so it makes it a lot easier to use when you can simply swipe down. The other option I would recommend turning off inside the settings menu, this is just an extra bonus tip, is the add new apps to home screen because otherwise it's going to fill up your home screen with all the new apps you download on your new device. And if you bought a Galaxy phone, you probably don't want the iPhone approach to having every single app on your home screen. So that's something you can also turn off to make things look a little bit less cluttered. The next one is display settings. And there are quite a few of them to dig into. Let's go into the main settings menu once again, and we're going to find the display settings in the main menu. Display is near the top here, and you'll notice that under display settings, there's quite a few things you can change. Obviously, you can turn your brightness on. I would recommend auto brightness, but that's entirely up to you. You can change your motion smoothness. This is a really important one. Make sure it's set to adaptive, which gives you that 120 hertz refresh rate. When you're scrolling your Twitter, Instagram feed, it's gonna look super smooth. It's one of the flagship features on your Galaxy S23 Ultra. You also wanna change your screen resolution if you'd like to take full advantage of the display on your device. It comes set to FHD plus out of the box, but of course the Galaxy S23 Ultra is capable of WQHD plus. And if you wanna get the most out of your device, and that's what we're doing here in the beast mode video, you'll definitely wanna crank it up to that maximum resolution with also the 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now you can do a couple of other cool things in here as well. One thing that I highly recommend if you use a screen protector is to turn on the touch sensitivity. And whether you use a screen protector or not, I'd highly recommend turning on accidental touch protection so that you don't have that accidental touches in your pocket where you accidentally text or call someone that you didn't mean to. That's something that can very easily happen, especially the fact that this still does have a curved display, although slightly less curved than what we saw on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. It can still occur. 
and changing those display settings, and also if you're like me, turning on dark mode can really make a difference in your day-to-day -day use. Before we continue on to the next tip, I want to let you guys know if you've recently switched to the Galaxy S23 Ultra and you're looking to save some money on your wireless service, you can do that by switching to my partners over at Mint Mobile. They have premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. They also have plans that can suit pretty much any budget and any needs in terms of total data. They've got a 4 gigabyte a month plan for 15 bucks a month, 10 gigabytes for 20 a month, 15 gigs for 25 a month, and unlimited for $30 a month. All the plans come with unlimited talk and text, nationwide coverage, and also mobile hotspot included. It's very, very simple to switch. You can get an eSIM or a physical SIM shipped directly to you. They have no overhead like the bigger carriers, well, physical stores and things like that. And I've been using it here in Phoenix, Arizona for the last four and a half months and had fantastic service on my S22 Ultra and now on my S23 Ultra. Also, if you guys like to take advantage of this, currently, if you go to my link, which is mintmobile.com slash Springer, it's also in the pinned comment description, I will send you out a free phone case, which means any S23 Ultra case that you're interested in, if you sign up for any three-month Mint Mobile plan today, I'm doing that as a courtesy for my subscribers. Mint is not doing it directly. Go to mintmobile.com slash Springer to sign up today. The next tip is auto optimization and RAM Plus. So if you go into the settings menu and you go into battery and device care, which again is towards the bottom, go into battery and device care, you'll find the auto optimization menu right here. If you tap this, it'll allow you to restart your device when needed. Basically, this allows your phone to go through and clear up some of the cache space, clear up some of that memory, just do a little bit of organization. It's always a good idea to restart your phone, even on an iPhone from time to time. If you're coming from an iPhone, it's still good to do it on an iPhone as well. And this makes sure it takes care of it. It'll start at a time that you're not using it. So basically, if you sleep overnight at 3 a.m., it'll restart in the middle of the night. You'll never even know what happened, but it'll make your phone run smoother in general. The other thing you can do to speed up your phone is if you go into the memory section of battery and device care, you can turn on what's called RAM Plus. RAM Plus, which is at the bottom here, allows you to use a certain amount of RAM basically towards, so you're basically taking some of your storage and using that as RAM, which makes it virtual RAM. This can speed up your phone in terms of running apps if you run a lot of apps simultaneously and do a lot of multitasking. The default is four gigabytes, but you can also turn that down to two gigabytes. You can also turn it off entirely or up to eight gigabytes. If you do change the feature though, you will need to restart, which is why I'm not going to do that right now. You can also choose to exclude apps from auto optimization. I recommend doing that for your social media apps because sometimes the auto optimization will make it so that you don't get notifications for Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. So it might be a good idea to exclude those apps from the auto optimization for memory settings. Up next, let's go into the power saving modes. So if you're getting a lot of performance on your phone, you've changed those display settings, you've changed everything I've talked about in order to get that maximum performance, it might also drain a little more battery. So one thing you can do is if you need it, you can go into power saving in the quick settings. If you long press on the power saving menu, it takes you right into that setting. Now you can turn it on when you need it as needed. You don't have to turn it on all the time. There's several options though that you can customize based on your own needs. If you use the always on display, you can choose to turn off always on display in power saving mode. Limit CPU speed to 70%, decrease brightness by 10%, and limit apps and home screen usage. By default, background network usage syncing and location checking is limited, and motion smoothness is changed from adaptive back to standard. So if you use your phone all day and you just need a little bit of extra juice to get home and throw it on a charger before you go out, power saving mode is a great option. And if some of these things are things that you don't want, just turn them off. For instance, I still like to keep my brightness up and then modify the other things. You can find some combination that works for you and still gives you a great experience and battery life. The next thing is bright mode for videos. So the beautiful thing about this device is that you can turn on bright mode for videos and it's in the settings, advanced features menu. If you scroll down, you'll see here where it says video brightness. What you'll wanna do is go ahead and turn that from normal to bright. What this allows is if we're to temporarily increase the screen brightness and make colors more vibrant when you watch videos, particularly when you watch HDR content, which has that extra bright, beautiful display, it's going to show fantastic on your Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, the great thing is you can even customize which of your video apps that you have on your device, you can see I have a lot of them, that you want to turn on the bright mode for. I turn it on for all of mine because I like it. Some people don't want it in particular apps because they might watch certain types of content for which they want the normal brightness on. So you can customize that to your liking right here. 
The final thing is going to be gaming. So there's a couple of things you can do with gaming and I'm actually gonna go in here and just search for them to show you the two things that I'm talking about here. The first thing is if you go in here and search for gaming, you'll find Dolby Atmos. Now Dolby Atmos can actually be turned on for all types of media. That's what the top one here is. Experience breakthrough audio for media playback that flows above and around you. You want that on obviously to enjoy your movies, your media, Netflix, and on YouTube but you also can turn it on separately for gaming. You get realistic Dolby Atmos sound when you're playing your games, and that's fantastic. You can also play that with the equalizer and things when you're using Dolby Atmos right inside the sound quality and effects menu. Now, the next thing you can do when it comes to games is you can go in and modify your game booster settings. So you'll see game booster and game launcher. Those are the two other key gaming settings. If you go into game booster settings, you'll notice that there's a couple of things you can do. I have an update, but I'll update that later. Maybe make another app on another video on that as well. But the standard game booster settings allow you to block certain notifications during the game, have a floating shortcut menu, change the screen resolution, change the format for your screenshots that you use. And perhaps the most important one is the menu option for labs. What this does is it allows you to turn on alternate game performance management which basically lets you eke every last ounce of performance out of the processor in your device. If you turn that on, it can cause some additional heating, but with the Snapdragon uh, 8 Gen 2, that's going to allow you to get pretty good cooling still, and the new cooling system in the S23 Ultra, you shouldn't really have any heating, but you can definitely turn that on. I found that it helps when I play games on the device. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff you can do within Game Booster, but that's one I definitely recommend turning on. Now you can also turn on Game Launcher. Game Launcher basically allows you to organize all of your favorite games and access extra features like that floating tab, shortcut menu, and all those things that I offered earlier. So if you play a lot of games, you'll definitely want to turn on the Game Launcher feature as well. All right, guys, so those are my tips for going beast mode on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe if you want more great Samsung content. I cover how to's, tutorials, customization videos for Samsung. I have tons of S23 Ultra coverage coming up. And also, again, if you guys want to get some premium wireless, go to mintmobile.com slash Springer. Check out my link, and you can also get a free case from me. Just get in contact with me on Twitter or in my email, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.